Hey guys, this is Chelsea Schaefer and this is The Score. This is the Team Roping Journal's venture into the world of podcasting. On this show, you'll be able to bring the Team Roping world's movers and shakers on the road or to the office with you. They'll be telling stories and talking through some of the issues facing this sport. As the editor of the Team Roping Journal, I'll be your host. Hey guys, welcome to the Bob Feist Invitational Champion episode of The Score. (laughs) Luckily, on Tuesday morning, right after the BFI, Chris Francis and Cade Pasick decided to sit down with us and visit about their emotional, life-changing win. These two guys work for Matthews Land and Cattle, and they produce World Series ropings, so they're very near and dear to our hearts. They put on the ropings that you all go to at the South Point that are in, um, in the parking lot during the finale. They put on some of the best jackpots around, and we were so excited to see them win the feist. They came, They nearly led the whole roping um, by pretty much round three and four people were whispering, oh my gosh, how cool will it be if Stick and Cade win the feist? And sure enough, they finished what they started and they came to talk to us about it afterwards. So I sure hope you all enjoy this really special interview. Um, I had a great time with these guys and um, while we were recording people were walking by heading into the reno million and i mean every single person that walked by shook these guys hand and patted him on the back we probably paused the interview a dozen times to talk to people and and let them enjoy all of the congratulations that they were getting so i hope you enjoy it and i hope you share it with your friends so they can enjoy it too because these are humble champions and we so appreciate it thanks guys i hope you have a great day I am sitting here at, outside of the Reno Livestock Event Center the day after the 2018 Bob Feist Invitational with Chris, Dick Francis, and Cade Passig. Is it real today, guys? I think it is. I woke up about 3 o'clock this morning and was like, wow, and I couldn't go back to sleep. It really wasn't much. I, I mean, I shouldn't say it wasn't much, but it was hadn't really sunk in yesterday evening and then about three o'clock this morning I think it finally hit me but yeah it was pretty cool yes yesterday we had got back from eating dinner and I told my girlfriend I said it doesn't even really feel like I want anything I just really hadn't sunk in yet and then this morning I got up and it kind of felt a little more real to me this morning yeah um tell me how, so go back to how you guys met. You were what was going on in your life when you were in college and you ran into this kid when he was two years old. Tell me, tell me, take us back. Um, I, yeah, I was college rodeoing and and his dad was picking up Bronx and so when I was little, this will tell you how old and poor I was. But we used to rent VCRs when I was a kid. Like that's I know that sounds weird, but um, my dad and I were watching a. a Roping video, a George Strait video, I believe, and uh, Shotgun's name came up on there. And my dad said, I grew up with him, that'd be pretty cool if you rope good enough one day to meet him. And then uh, he was picking up Bronx and he came up and introduced himself to me. And we we started amateur rodeo and I moved in with him. Cade was two, I guess. And he, he grew up in a pickup with us, amateur rodeo. And so um, he hauled me around, kind of taught me how to win, and it was pretty cool. What was Cade like as a kid? Uh, he was a great kid. He's always been a great kid and a great human being. Like, he's never never drank, never partied. Like, I was a knothead forever. And and to see Cade grow up and not go through that, you know, he, he's been a great kid. Um, he He's always wanted to rope. I, I've got to see him since he started till now, so it's pretty cool. Um, I had a horse that I got when he was two years old. And I give him to Cade when he was probably 19 or something. He died when he was like 22 years old, but Cade started roping on him. And and um, so it's kind of been a, a fairy tale deal, you know, with, to get to see Cade grow up. Um, Cade, what is your first memory of Chris? Uh, I can remember running down to the basement of the house every day and jumping on top of him when he lived down there. But, oh... I don't really can't think of a first one. I just, I mean, we went a million miles together. It seemed like every weekend we were some little 
cab and a half truck, we'd be crammed in the back seat or so I mean it was we have a lot of memories I guess just traveling all over the place when I was young getting to go with him and my dad and Shotgun seems like a char- he's like a pretty big character in all of this. Tell me tell me a little bit about your dad. Uh, he's he's definitely played a big part I would think in his and my and my success. He taught both of us how to win and kind of how to kind of act like you're, you know, represent yourself as a professional when you do things. And uh, that was one thing when I was, when he'd haul me all over the place, is he always said, act like a professional, you know. And the biggest thing I think he ever told me was, he said, win, lose, or draw tomorrow, everybody forgets about it, so keep moving forward. And so that was the first thing I thought this morning I got up. It, everybody forgets about it today. So you just keep moving forward and look for something else to to set your goal on but I think he's definitely both of us if we get to where maybe we're struggling and not roping good we can always call him and he can if he can't fix a problem he'll tell you how good you are and build your confidence up to where you feel like indestructible you know so it's he's definitely a good person to have on your side um, and now, Chris, you grew up, you said your dad was a police officer. Uh, give me a little bit more about how you grew up. And you were you were already college rodeoing when you met Shotgun, right? So tell me about your roping background before that. Um, I grew up, He we, my dad transferred around quite a bit. And then um, I guess I probably spent the most time as a kid in Gallup. And um, um, I learned a lot there. Uh, we never practiced a lot, but there was like $5 jackpots. So Dennis Begay, who is um, Derek Begay's uncle, he taught me a ton, a ton. We, we roped the dummy every day, and then him and, and um, some of those guys back there, Everett City and Curtis City, they would haul me around to little $5 jackpots, and they'd get after me and holler at me and, and teach me how to rope, you know. And I learned a ton there, and there's such a love for rope in there that I mean as everybody can see from Derek and Aaron and Eric and all of them I mean they've done so great Um, but I I learned a lot there and it was a a cool way to grow up. Talk to me about Oren Matthews how did you get involved with Oren Matthews and Matthews Landing Cattle? Oren uh, he's been a family friend my dad and Oren were good friends so he's been a family friend for a long time And um, one day he told me, he said, one of these days you're going to get your crap together and you're going to be my guy and and put on ropings. And I didn't think much of it. And um, then one day I needed a job. I had worked for some people that were great to me for 10 years or something. And uh, we kind of, things changed and, and I needed a job. And... Oren said, I'm going to put you to work, and he had some cattle that needed to be caught that they had missed, and I went and did that, and I just, I've stayed, and he's been just uh, great. He uh, allows Cade and I to do what we want to do, and um, is always behind us, and he's, uh, he lets us run the ropings for him and stuff. He's been a a real big help to both of us and actually to both of our whole families you know he he's our boss but he's also a really good friend to us you know so what's the setup like do you guys live together do you have a place Cade do you have a place somewhere on the ranch I do we both live on the same place like I don't know maybe maybe a quarter of a mile apart uh, he lives kind of closer to the feedlot where we keep all the steers, and I live right beside the arena, so it's pretty nice right out your front door. You have an arena sitting right there. I'm, this is the first arena I've ever had, I think, at my house. We've never had one. I just roped goats, but, uh, yeah, just the same place, about a quarter of a mile apart. So. But, um, what's a typical day like there at Matthews Landing Cattle? I have to tell you, and I will read you the email that Denny sent me this morning. Denny Gentry wrote a novel about you two and how you're the most deserving men to ever win the BFI um, and that nobody has ever wrote more steers than you two. Um, but <laughs> I'll share some more details eventually. But um, tell me, what's a typical day like? How many steers do you rope a day? What's There's really not a typical day there. Like, if we're... 
need to break in steers and we get up in the morning um, we have a boy Justin that helps us and and uh, we uh, he feeds in the morning we sort off what we're gonna break in we break in steers all day if we have old steers we've got to rope through we rope through them sometimes we may be caking cows all day or checking fence I mean there's just not really a and and that's what I love so much about it is there's not a typical day you don't get wore out like before Vegas or before we start the spring there's a lot of breaking in steers and it gets kind of typical day you know seven in the morning till seven at night breaking in steers but I don't know that's there's not really just a everyday routine you know is there a favorite part of your routine though is there a favorite part of your day for you uh the, besides the roping I don't really know it's I just I enjoy riding horses and stuff that's like I told you last week just riding horses and just being able to get up every day and I guess be a cowboy you could say and having your horse horses and cows are your livelihood I mean that's I mean that's not really a job to me it's just fun so um Denny said you guys get a lot of you just buy a great horse to break in steers with and eventually it becomes an expensive horse that all the best cowboys in the world want where do you get some of your horses that go through your program we just trade around for them we're I feel like I'm kind of always looking for something for me or my wife, and if they work for us, good. If not, then we use them around there and sell them just kind of wherever. I don't know. We just um, trade around for them and buy them wherever we can, whatever. Cade, you are still, you're 24. Um, in one of, in the note Denny sent me this morning, he said they, they very well, could, if they choose, to stay home, they will be the best guys in the world that never went to the NFR and never tried. Do you want to try? Oh, I would love nothing more than to be able to rodeo full-time. Both of us, I mean, we talk about it, and kind of like we had said yesterday, we just really haven't had the backing to be able to stay out there. Because, I mean, something like this, yes, for sure, and get you through, but, I mean, there, you're going to have a few weeks where... I mean, you could put it on the chute and you probably lose your rope, you know. So it's hard to get through those weeks. And uh, I truly believe that one day we'll have the opportunity to do it. I want to do it with him, you know. That's, I mean, I've thought, yeah, we should go out and maybe rodeo, but I, I want to do it with him before I do it with anybody else. I mean, we're, all, we're pretty well brothers before we're partners, you know what I mean? And that's if we ever have anything wrong with each other or anything you know we can we'll just tell each other and practice in we'll just tell each other what we're thinking and what we think we need to work on or something so I mean that's there's no other person I'd want to do it with Chris are you is there a plan is there what would it take what kind of backing what kind of what change in the way you're living your life would it take for you guys to go make the finals you know I don't know I think it's it's pretty easy to say but it's hard to do, you know. Those those guys, especially I, I'm old. These guys are young, and they're awesome. All of them. They, I don't know what would have to change. It, it's I need to be able to have enough where I can provide for my family. You know what I mean? I'm not going to lose everything to say I made a run at the NFR. It, it's everyone's dream, obviously. And uh, I don't know. I I feel like things always work out how they're supposed to and God's got a plan for everybody's life and and I try not to overthink it just if we ever get a chance to go and, and be able to I, I sure wouldn't leave my boss hanging and, and just leave but um, if we got a chance where we had enough where we could pay our own way and go and um, still provide for my family and pay my bills and him pay his bills I, I would love nothing more than to try it you know and now we're going to take a break from this conversation to learn a little bit more about our presenting sponsor, U.S. Rider. U.S. Rider is the premier equestrian roadside assistance program in the industry. Membership includes 24-7 nationwide roadside assistance coverage in any vehicle you are traveling in, as well as coverage for horse trailers, whether you have horses on board or not. In addition, members receive an extensive package of discounts on equine-related goods and services, regular equine travel, and safety information and insurance products to fit all of your needs as a horse owner or business. Two levels of membership are available to meet the needs of all horse enthusiasts, owners, competitors, and business people. 
coverage includes towing up to 100 miles for truck and or trailer, roadside repair service, tire repair and replacement, lockout service, jump starts and fuel delivery, emergency stabling, farrier and vet referral, and discounts on equine products and services. I want to tell you a little bit about that fuel delivery. My husband got his very first brand new pickup truck and we were headed to Arizona from Colorado this winter and he pushed the limit a little bit on that E and we ran out of fuel in the mountains outside of Albuquerque, New Mexico. I tried the roadside assistance that was in the truck, built into the truck and had no luck getting a hold of anybody to come out and bring us fuel. But I climbed to the top of a hill, got cell service and called US Rider. Their first question was, are you and your horses okay? Absolutely, we were okay. We were just broke down and stuck. They sent somebody out within a half hour with uh, five gallons of fuel, and that person followed us the whole way into Albuquerque to make sure we got a full tank of fuel to get on to our next destination. Guys, they are awesome. I have used them more than I would like to admit. Um, so check it out at usrider.com and um, send us your feedback on it at the Team Rope and Journal. We'd love to hear from you. They're a great product. Tell your friends about it, and thank you to US Rider for supporting the score. Let's take it, let's go back to yesterday. We haven't really talked about what exactly happened yesterday. Did you guys, was the neck catch in the short round, was there any instance of panic when he threw that and it went around the steer's neck instead of his horns? No, ma'am. He handles them around. He can wrap them around the half head. He, can, he always handles them good. So I wasn't really, I wasn't really worried about it at all. No, I just the only thing I was worried about yesterday is doing my job. I knew he'd turn the steers for me, and he always handles them good. I mean, you don't ever hardly have to throw at one that's hard to heal. So I just knew I need to do my job yesterday. I kind of, I didn't, I don't watch the head rope go on, but I can kind of see a little bit that it might have went around the neck. But there was, I didn't try to change anything I just I mean I guess that's just from roping so many steers together that you can just be able to adjust in a blink of an eye like that you know Chris was the net catch intentional Denny then he thought it might have been no it, it sure wasn't uh I'm not scared to rope them around the neck. It doesn't bother me, but I was not trying to get the neck right there. I, when it went around his neck, I was like, oh, man, I'm going to screw this up right here. But um, I roped I roped one around the neck in the short round at the, the U.S. Finals for him two years ago, and we won third over there. So maybe I need to just keep doing that again. I don't know. With the partnership with the World Series, how passionate are you guys about put? I mean, what has team roping as an industry and amateur team roping meant for your careers? I just, I enjoy watching it. It doesn't matter if it's from the lowest number to the highest number. I mean, it's, I love to see people be good at things and it's like, I really, a lot of people, you know, they might make fun of watching the eight or nine are open, but like this is so pure right there. Like people do it cause they enjoy it so much. And I, when you get down to that and start watching it like it's just it's really neat to sit there and all the ropings we put on and how much people just truly enjoy to rope you know they're not maybe not trying to be the best in the world or anything it's just they just truly love to do it and so I, I think that's awesome so since this is just recorded nobody's seeing every single person that walks by is coming up and shaking your hand does that make it more real with every handshake with every oh yeah my, my phone has just gone crazy all night I, I've made it a point I stayed up till midnight saying thank you to everyone that texted me and I get up this morning and I was like man I gotta start all over <laughs> it's pretty cool to have that many people in your corner you know and and um yeah the like you asked about the world series and team roping right here today all these guys going by uh it, it you said it, it's an industry now Denny's taking what was a hobby and when I was a kid was a five dollar jackpot now it's a multi-million dollar industry and i mean Cade's one of the best announcers not a lot of people know that he announces all our ropings and he's become one of the best announcers out there um so we're proud to be part of, of, of such something that's growing so big you know it, it's pretty cool to and it's that industry fuels what we do every day if with without this we don't have to break in steers we don't need to put on ropings we don't you know so it provides a, a means to an end for us and i don't know that anybody was more excited well i take that back 
The most excited for you person must have been that guy that jumped in the arena with you. Who was that? That's a good friend of ours from uh, South Texas. His name's Cord Kroll. I never saw him in, until I think me and my horse saw him at the same time. And I dang near fell off. I, th- I thought I was going to fall off. And then I thought he stopped. And I looked down and here he came again. And my horse <laughs> ran off again. But yeah, he's he's like family to us. He's a really good friend of both mine and Cade. So yeah, it was pretty cool. That's awesome. So then maybe the second most excited person was Barry Berg. He was so stoked for you guys. How long have you been with Cactus Ropes? Uh, I've only been with him for about a year now, but uh, Barry's been great. I've used Cactus Gear. I've been on the Cactus Gear deal for a few years, and uh, Mike had told me last year, a little over a year ago, he said, if you ever need a home, you'll have one right here, and uh, I had had a another rope company that I'd used for like nine years and uh, I'd went to Cactus and they they were awesome. Barry does a great job and Mike and they work really hard. I mean I think they've got some of the best ropes and they're really good people very very friendly. I mean you're not, you call up their order ropes you're not treated like just another account number you know you're just kind of family treated you know what I mean real homely feeling How long have you been I think like 11 or 12 years, something like that. Um, quite a while, and yeah, they're, they're awesome, all of them. From, when we go in there, I, I like to go see how they make them and cruise through the, the shop there, and all of them are so cool to us. And Barry, yeah, it was, it was pretty awesome to have Barry here yesterday. What ropes won the BFI yesterday? I used a Whistler yesterday, a new Whistler that Barry's got going, and yeah. Uh, I use the Hypnotic. That's the one I always use. Yes, ma'am. What lay? Uh, I use a hard medium all the time, jackpot and rodeo, and that's the same rope all the time. Well, very cool, you guys. What's, so what's the, where do you go from here? What's the rest of the summer look like? We go to Santa Fe, Alamosa at the end of this week to a few rodeos, and then we'll get to go home for a couple days, and then, oh, I don't know, we probably have 10 or so rodeos to go to starting that next week over kind of the 4th of July. Um, We have a few ropings to put on and just kind of keep rodeoing and enjoying it. We got... We'll put on a rope in, and we might enter a rodeo somewhere around the rope in, and then have a weekend off and go rodeo a little bit and come back. So, just really keep roping, I guess. And your your little girl, what's the? Does she come with you everywhere? What's the plan with her? Uh, she has my wife staying out here for the all girl. We've got to go home because we're up Friday at Santa Fe. Um, but yeah, she's pretty well. When she was two weeks old, we had her in Vegas putting the roping on in Vegas. So she's been. I always say she's been to more ropings this year than most team ropers but yeah she's seven months old and she goes with us quite a bit and she if she gets fussy or something you take her outside or put her on a horse and she's happy so it's pretty cool how has fatherhood changed things you know it's it's pretty cool uh night rider and i were talking about it the other day on the phone it's if you do bad and you're you're bummed you always want to win but then you come out and see your baby you know it's like everything's okay it's it's been pretty cool it's it's the coolest thing i've ever done for sure definitely well guys thank you so much i appreciate your time this morning and thank you for being on the score hey before you go leave us a rating on itunes leave us a review let the world know what you think that helps more people find us on itunes and Give us a shout out, share it with your friends so more people can know about the score, can talk team roping, and hopefully help push this industry even further forward. Thank you all.